Hello. Today uh, I'm with you in spirit, but not physically, and I um, want to go over several things, and hopefully my kids don't keep interrupting while I'm trying to record this. It's actually harder than I thought. But um, what we're going to start out with is uh, uh, with a few questions that people had, which I thought were really great questions. And the first one is an interesting example of a non-commutative ring. And um, the, this came up because individuals had mentioned that well, we had talked about all kinds of non-commutative, or I had expressed the importance of commutativity in a lot of the theorems, and of course we want an example beside us of a non-commutative ring. But almost everything that you can think of, like Zn, for example, is commutative under multiplication. So it's very difficult to think of what could happen that could go wrong when you don't have commutativity. So here's an example. If we take and this is an H with a double bar on it, four component vectors with the components A, B, C, and D all as real numbers, equipped with addition defined the usual way that we sum the components up term by term, then we have the abelian group property under plus. But multiplication is going to be defined in this very funky way which I don't expect you to memorize in, in, under any circumstance. It's just that this is the definition. Um, and what we get out of this, though, is we get a ring uh, with the plus and the times as just defined. And this ring is a special ring. It's called the ring of quaternions. And in fact, this ring of quaternions is discussed in um, a section later on in Frele when he, where he talks about non-commutative rings. I'm not sure it's expressed in the way that I've expressed it here. This ring is subscripted or scripted with the H because it's named for a um, scientist named Hamilton, and it was discovered for a specific application to celestial mechanics. In fact, if you go look up quaternions on the internet, you'll find all kinds of papers related to mechanics. And here's an example of one that quickly came up under a Google search with quaternions and celestial mechanics as the keywords. So this is a nice uh, application of abstract algebra to something in physics, which several of you were asking me for in class. This ring is very nice. It has a multiplicative identity. 1000 zero, zero, zero turns out to be the multiplicative identity. And in fact, all the non-zero elements have a multiplicative inverse. So it's as nice as it can be. I didn't want to uh, risk actually doing the calculations of arithmetic by hand because we know I'm terrible at arithmetic. So I programmed a little Visual Basic program that will give me multiplication of two quaternions automatically. So in this case, I selected my A to be 1, 2, 3, 4, and my B to be 5, 6, 7, 8, and I just calculated A times B. A times B turns out to be minus 60, 12, 30, and 24. Just to remind you, I have A times B above, and I just switched the A and the B, and I calculated B times A. And you see in green, B times A is minus 60, 20, 14, and 32. So A times B is not equal to B times A for the first random set of uh, elements that I chose. So this um, ring is not commutative. This example of a ring is a division ring. So in, in your book, it's on page 173. Um, it's a ring with an identity, no zero divisors, and all the non-zero elements are units. But it's not a field, and it's not a field because we don't satisfy the commutativity, if that's a word.